Ah, uh, Bethesda and Arcane. Hey guys, Dambot here, and let's have a little chat, shall we? It seems that Bethesda is continuing their anti-consumer ways, along with Arcane Studios, developers of Prey and Dishonored 2. I'm sure we all remember that Dishonored 2 was pretty much an unmitigated disaster when it came out on PC as far as the port went. I myself had to cut my stream short because, well, the poor performance was actually making my viewers motion sick with the stuttering and the choppiness. Last week, a demo was released for Prey. It was released for the consoles, but not for the PC. PS4 and Xbox One got a demo. Pretty short one, but there wasn't one for PC. Now, the reason, according to Arcane President Ralph Colantoni Colantonio, God, him. <clears throat> they couldn't do a demo on both the console and on the PC, and they had to choose. Now, he further went on to explain that the developer chose to focus on consoles because players on PC can play the game for up to two hours after launch and get a refund for it due to Steam's refund program. And I quote, besides, PC has Steam. Steam players can just return the game prior to playing two hours, so it's like a demo already. We'll get into that in just a second, but... They also emphasize that and this is to GameSpot, they emphasize that Arcane does not view the PC version of the game as just a port of the console releases. Rather, the developer is treating Prey as a PC game first. Now, he went on to say that the game starts on PC, not on consoles, and that they don't just suddenly decide to port a game to PC. He also continued to state, and I would say blame, but this statement is fairly accurate, the reason why PC games often have problems is because there are so many permutations of hardware. Okay, so... Basically, they learned from Dishonored 2, but not in the way we wanted them to, because they have claimed they're testing and testing and testing it. Basically, what they learned is not to say the port's going to be great, and they learned to cover their asses. They also learned not to let PC players have access to a demo beforehand, because what PC players really want a lot of times is to be able to test the game and see if it'll work right. And they want to do that without a 60 gigabyte download, which is absolutely insane. I might do that for a free weekend of a game that I'm interested in, but I'm not doing it just for a short demo. Now, before we jump into the idea of what they said about Steam, let's first backpedal for a second and talk about what a demo is. So, demos started out in the early 1990s with shareware. So, uh, those of you who are old enough and remember Apogee or Epic Mega Games or id, this is how Jazz Jackrabbit and Commander Keen and... Duke Nukem and Doom and Wolfenstein got spread around. Basically, you could play the first episode or so of a game and then you could purchase the rest of the game. Uh, shareware is kind of where demos came from. And then there were the magazines in the 90s. Who doesn't remember the PlayStation Magazine and the demo disc? Who doesn't remember Xbox exhibition discs? So, Demos have been around for a long time, especially since the invention of the DVD and CD-ROM, which made it much, much cheaper. And demos are usually stripped-down versions of the full game, so only some levels, only certain features, or a limited amount of time. Sometimes you get stuff like Age of Empires demo, which had a Hittites campaign and two maps that weren't in the actual full version, or Half-Life Uplink, which is made from material cut from the development of Half-Life. Uh, you get things like Mafia 3, which had the Buzzsaw mission and it took place in the 1950s as, a, uh, as opposed to um, Mafia, or excuse me, as opposed to 1945, so, or Mafia 2, not Mafia 3, rather. Oh, my brain. But, generally, what developers do is they try to give you an interesting slice of gameplay. Maybe not from too far in the story, but a lot of the times not from the very, very beginning. And they try to hook you with some unique abilities or moments, set piece moments that stick the game in your head and make you want to play them. Prey is a story based game. Story based games generally start off very slowly. By the time you get a game running to your satisfaction, graphics options, key bindings that you want on a PC, get through the first bits of story exposition and then begin to play, you could very easily have lost upwards of an hour of time, leaving you only a few minutes to make a decision about the game, and 
that's going to be mainly spent in tutorial sections, and unless the tutorial section is extremely good, I can think of very, very few tutorials that would sell me on a game if it was the only thing I got to play. It's somewhat arrogant of the head of Arcane Studios to say, oh, well, just download a 60 gigabyte game and then refund it if, you know, you don't want it and you can just treat that as your demo. No, that's, that's not how it works. Uh, do you guys think that we're actually that stupid? Uh, what this is, is, and this ties in, I think, to Bethesda's stated policy of not giving game codes prior to release, is anti-consumer. Basically, this, to me, continues Bethesda's long-standing policy of covering up poor ports or poorly made games, covering them from criticism prior to release. Now, if the game runs poorly on PC, guess what? Nobody's going to know it until it actually launches on PC, because there was no demo unless you want to wait till it comes out, pay 60 bucks for it, download it, find out you don't like it, uninstall it, and wait for your 60 bucks to come back. In addition, that ties up funds for a couple days. People don't normally have that much time to just have $60 tied up. $60 is a not insubstantial amount of money to a lot of gamers. So, again, arrogance in just saying, oh, we'll just spend the $60 and if you don't like it, you'll get it back eventually. No, that's, that's not how this works. This is one more example to me of Bethesda just being anti-consumer and... I'm getting pretty close to being done with this company. The only thing that gives me any hope is Quake Champions, and I'm just just waiting on them to fuck that one up. So, I don't know. Prey launches today. We'll see what the uh, reviews are, but I won't be playing it. I refuse to support practices like this and the treatment of gamers like they are second-class citizens, or that they uh, should bend to the whim of the large developers. Now, go vote with your wallets, folks. Go buy a nice indie game. Uh, or something else. Maybe not even an indie game. I would recommend what you've been watching in the background. Little Nightmares. It's a great game. Uh, go play a MOBA. Go play Hearthstone or Overwatch. You know, loot boxes might be annoying, but I mean, at least you can play the game without them, you know. Pray, pray, pray. Arcane, Bethesda. I just... It's ridiculous. And it's going to continue like this unless we vote with our wallets. They're going to continue to treat gamers like we're idiots and they're going to continue to behave arrogantly and insultingly towards us. Anyways, that's enough of me being the same dead horse. If you enjoyed the video, guys, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and that handy Patreon button. I'll see you later.